Thank you so much. Firstly, I want to say I am not demoing as we are just opening the round. Uh, I want to go through my pitch deck. I love to have your comments on that. It's a very important moment for us. Uh, what I can, what you can help me is also it's about actually feedback about how do I pitch and. Uh, Of course, I'm Iranian, so my network is not the strongest things I have here. So if you can introduce me any VCs or family firm or uh, angels they are interested in terms of uh, SaaS platforms or e-commerces or AI, it will be amazing for us. Um, so let's get to it. Just, uh, sorry, I can't. Okay. Hello everyone, good evening. Good evening. It's Asma Siwan, founder of Vegang. I'm an Iranian human rights activist and tech entrepreneur. Four years ago, I built a marketplace where I quickly learned how difficult it is to find the right product and reliable suppliers. Wars and wars were spent on market research to find profitable, profitable ones and in demand one. But still nothing was guaranteed. And guess what? I got let down. Bad products, poor qualities, bad uh, delivery and like a failed delivery. I lost both time and money. That led me to a shocking statistic from Shopify. Online shop owners spend at least 10 hours, 30 hours per week to search to find the best products they can sell and also finding the reliable suppliers they can work with it. And it's not just me, 6 million online shop face the same struggle. It's look for the it's totally look like finding a needle in a haystack. Commerce Next suggests improving the product sourcing process. You can increase your revenue by staggering 300 percent. That's a problem we aim to solve. Meet Vegang. This is not just another platform or an improvement. It's a revolution in product sourcing process. Imagine an AI so advanced it feels like it knows your shop personally. Predict which product we sell best, the, and the outcome will be 20 hours saved every single week for online shop owners. Here's how it works. We collect sustainable top-tier products from brands you can trust. Our AI then filter out this collection to highlight only the best, the profitable, and the in-demand one. You can either manually search and filter by an uh, unvetted list of products or let our AI do the matching based on your specific market and audience. And the cherry on top, Vigang automate the entire sourcing process. With one click, products are imported and orders automatically sent to suppliers. We also provide real-time order tracking and automatic uh, inventory updates. No more manual order handling or inventory management. We can handle it seamlessly behind the scene. We launched it almost seven months ago. So far, more, more than 35,000 eco-friendly and vegan products are listed on Vegang and over 800 online shops are using our services. Through our subscription plans and freemium, Vegang is delivering real value. With a 12% conversion rate and 18-12 lifetime value of our customers, so far we've proven our model works. Now here is where it gets really interesting. With over 2 billion online shops expected by 2025 and 25 million dropshippers today, even without growth, our existing customer value alone represents over half a trillion in opportunity. You've got one more minute, Asma. Do we have competitor? Of course. Are they doing the same? No. While they operate in traditional way and growing their product catalog, they are intentionally increasing the complexity and inefficiently. But Vigang is doing things differently, simplifying, curating, and streamlining, while others just growing complexity. We are a team of six. I have over 15 years of experience in e-commerce industry, work as a chief experience officer of the biggest marketplace in Middle East with over 60 million users. Alongside me, Shahin is our CTO. He worked previously for Instagram and he has more than 15 years experience on software development. And finally, L with eight years experience on product management. We have the expertise to make Vegan the leader of this industry. We are asking for a million to, uh, invest, sorry, to invest on our AI and growing our uh, user base. 
thank you. And yeah, thank you so much. Brilliant, thanks Asma. Just a little bit over time there. You feel the Britishness of Nick coming through there on that timekeeping. It's very interesting. Like, oh, no, I, I was, like the drawbridge I was, comes down, the the drawbridge. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, what's your first question here for Asma? No, I, I, I thought it was very, very amazing. Thanks, thanks for the pitch. I, I enjoyed the pitch. I thought it was very clear. Um, I, I think it's quite an exciting business. Uh, the thing, the thing that occurred to me, and I just want to, and I'm sure you've addressed it, is obviously you've got you've got this product. Looks like you've got something that's that's moving ahead of the competition. How are you going to stop the competition just copying your idea and just kind of going with it? That's actually a very good question because most of the competitors, I can say actually all of the competitors we have, it's like a Overload, CJ Dropshipping, Spocket, Sinky, they are all very traditional dropshipping platforms. So dropshipping platform by dropshipping platforms by itself are like uh, as old as marketplace and other e-commerces. So the concept on those businesses was increasing the product catalog. So they are fully focused on just getting the suppliers in and it gets up and we did it first. So we know it's a very time consuming things to do. What we are doing is we are literally building on top of them. So instead of going and, uh, I don't know, competing with CJ dropshipping, we are using the data on the CJ dropshipping. We are getting the product from them, but we are doing a curation on those products. And then with that one, online shop don't need to go for to a, like a list of 10,000 products and filter it by themselves and then guess if it's the product fit for their shop. We do all those kind of stuff by uh, AI and data. Mm. Can I just ask another quick question? Because I'm just curious, because I, I work with e-commerce companies and also e-commerce sort of analytics companies. And one of them is actually looking at pricing and making sure that pricing is kind of the best pricing, because that's that's part of the procurement process. Are, are you doing a lot for that as well? Uh, can you explain a bit more what you mean exactly? I, I think what, what I'm getting at is part of the process of procuring new products, obviously there's time is actually trying to get ahead of the competition by getting it something a bit cheaper than uh, than everybody else can. So you can actually steal a march in your own pricing. And I'm just wondering if you can- uh, We are providing, our services is for the drop shippers. So the basic idea yeah. of that one is just the finding the product that are profitable. So it means they have the highest margin for them. So we are looking for the supplier. They are reliable, but also the profit margin is high. So if you have a two different product, one is uh, both can be same price, but the supplier can pre uh, can present a different profit margin. So we will go with the profit uh, product with a higher profit margin. Did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. And, and Barnaby got a prize for saying stay in your lane. Now you've got Steel a March, which I think is excellent to bring the Britishness in. Thank you very much. All right, we'll go to Pedro Gimaraes for, for this one, and then um, we'll come over to Barnaby for some feedback. So Pedro, what, what do you think? Asma. Thank you, yes, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I agree with Nick. It was a, a very interesting presentation. Um, I understand why you started by vegan or by eco-friendly, sorry, products. Um, is it because you want to find a niche that can, can be, would establish yourself in being profitable and then grow from there? Or is there any special reason we should know about it? In other words, are you going to move forward to other markets or to other sorts of, of products? Or are you going to stay focused on that? Uh, this is actually a question I really look forward to answer to that because the more the products we are building can go across of the different business models from dropshipping to normal e-commerces and even for the brand because it's all about the AI engine and machine learning that can predict the next one. Yeah, The reason we start with the uh, eco-friendly product and vegan product is kind of getting back to the mission we started vegan in the first place because we had a mission of increasing access for everyone to eco-friendly and vegan products so we started with that niche that niche by itself has a huge potential it's a very growing niche and every day it's just that we are seeing people are changing their behavior so we start with that one however if after a while we say okay we can grow we can go to another part without uh, like ruining the climate and ruining the world definitely we go for it thank you Thanks, Pedro. Thanks, Asma. Barnaby, what's your brain do with this one? What feedback do you want to give to Asma? Uh, that was a good pitch. Really good. Um, I was just thinking, I was this, this. So on the pitch side, like this is just my personal thing. And I don't know, maybe people listen to me and they're like, God, that guy's annoying. Um, he's kind of loud and in my face. But everyone has a different style. So it's not really, it's don't take this at all as a, as a, as a criticism because it may be that a lot of people prefer the way you do it. Um, 
I tend to get maybe I tend to get like quite animated or I feel like I do um and I don't know there's there's maybe some elements of that which um I felt were missing from your pitch um when I was listening in um so that but... was a bit flat in the way she presented it or it just didn't carry a a vim is that what you're saying but a bit more like intonation kind of variants okay um I but, but totally it... agree with you I'm totally agree with you but but like I said, everyone everyone's different, so I don't want to throw you off if no, other people are, think that you, you pitch are definitely <laughs> right. You are definitely right. The thing is, uh, I'm not native, and that I'm actually tough. very nervous of speaking English because I feel like okay, if uh, people probably can uh, forgive my accent, but definitely grammar issue is not something you can do it. So I'm trying to stick to what I memorize. Yeah. Yeah, and because of that, we lose it. But anyway, it's uh, exactly exact things I am trying to get better on it. Uh, no, it's it's really hard if it's not your first language, and I think you did you did a really good job. And I think actually the it, it, there's a, maybe it it can actually mask bad grammar and bad, bad words because if your excitement comes through, people just don't really care about the words so much. I think, um, and they just get kind of grabbed by by your excitement. I agree. Uh, Thank you. Um, I hope that was helpful. Oh, it always <laughs> really good. Oh, it was. Really it was. Good. Yeah. <laughs> So let me just say a couple of sentences. One is, uh, you started like you were reading, it sounded like you were reading, but then you got loose and it worked. I think it was a lot better. And uh, one of the great things that I find that doing these demo nights is now we have a video that you can see you can, and you can see yourself doing this demoing and you can learn from it and, and not just the feedback you're getting here, but you can see it over and over again and, and you know, perfect the things that you think needs uh, improvement. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, sure. Totally. Totally. And just before I pop over to Tiana for her views on stuff, you know, as my, I teach this stuff at university, right? I do a master's in entrepreneurship and giving a pitch and giving a presentation is part of that, right? So one of the key things we teach in that is to remember to always be authentically who you are and to get as much of that authentic personality across as possible. So kind of feeding on what Barnaby's saying, maybe it's shielding a little bit what who you are and the reason that's so important is because investors if they invest in your company they're going to spend with a success story seven to ten years with you and in this first moment what they're really trying to ascertain is if they like you and it seems really odd right but an investment decision about do i like you why is that important it's because if they don't like you seven to ten years is a really long time to spend any amount of time with somebody you don't like okay so part of the chemistry of that deal is actually them working out if they're going to sit in a boardroom with you and enjoy your company in some way for the next seven to ten years and they'll say oh no it's about the logic and the reason and the the metrics and it's not it's all bullshit 70 percent of that decision is did i like you enough to want to invest in your company Did i want to do that Thank so you. the more you can do to get you out there whatever you is However you react to stuff, they need to see that so they can then say, okay, in a board or in a, the next mentoring or is she coachable and all this kind of stuff, they're going to be working out from that, okay? So I'll pop over to Tiana because she's seen probably about 6 billion pitches as well. So what's your thoughts on this, Tiana? <laughs> I, I actually agree with you about being who you are. And I think that uh, the fact that it's not your native language, it can actually be an advantage. You're not from there. So you have insights in some other markets that the rest of the people don't have. So it can be your advantage as well. And on the other hand, it's content that is important and not so much the accent, et cetera. I mean, my accent for sure is a foreign one and I speak as fast as I can when I have something important to say that I find to be important, right? And uh, another thing is that your business is about passion. You're an activist, you're trying to change the world. So the passion is not lacking, the enthusiasm is not lacking. We need to hear that. And uh, altogether, the content of the pitch, I think, is, was really good. And uh, as a vegan, I love the idea. And uh, I think this is what we need. We need to help this transition to more sustainable life. Uh, and uh, what drew my attention, that's the only comment uh, I, I want to add right now, uh, is the same thing as with Nick, the competition slide. Uh, it was even like kind of too good to be true. You know, uh, like uh, none of the competitors are not even Blue close. Ocean. Usually, usually in in these comparisons, we see like okay, they have uh, these features as we do, but then we have this one that is uh, in addition to what they have. But here is like they don't come even close <laughs> as much as we all would like to believe that. It sounds a little bit maybe unrealistic. Uh, so maybe either you explain it in a in a bit um, different way to to be more clear to everybody, or maybe you even 
uh, research. Why is this so? Um, have they tried similar things and uh, failed? Maybe you would like to know this sooner and later. Uh, is the fact that they're building on top of them some kind of risk? Uh, can they maybe, as maybe Nick mentioned, decide that since they already have the initial product, just add a layer on the top and then they would already be in a leading position? Or maybe they can in some way abstract it from getting the information that you need to build on top. I'm not sure if that would be impossible or like, but really that slide sounds too good to be true. So I think something needs to be researched there uh, a little bit more. And, uh, yeah. Um, that's exactly, that's a very, actually that a slide was really challenging for me to explain how is it working because I think, uh, actually it is, it's, I'm not, I'm one of my thinking is in general, the AI engine is working based on the amount of data, data you can collect. So most of these businesses just uh, created to just do the connection and we build the business to collect the data. So we, for example, whoever the, all the online shops already coming to our platforms, we are getting the agreement and we start collecting the data, what product they are selling, what cost, uh, product they are listing. So we start just by uh, just getting the data. So even if they want to do it, it's not like for like a one night thing. So even if they add AI on top of their platforms, then they have to start training the engine. How is it working? So in that case, we just kind of started before then others. And the reason we are right now having at that advantage is just because generative AI is really new before that. If you want to do a, like a sentiment analysis on comments, it will be a, like a huge data model of a machine learning and predictions. But nowadays it's really easy with the generative AI. It is still really new. So we have a very we literally were in a good place, good timing, and we just just use that things. We were just it was the opportunity we just catch. Yeah, so, sounds sounds great. Just something to pay attention uh, to, and also maybe to explain a little bit more in a bit more details on, for, on that slide. Of course, of course, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sure. Good luck with everything. Thanks, Tiana. I think we'll turn to Rachel for the final comment, and then we'll open out to Jeremy for his uh, his five minutes. So, Rachel, what does your brain do with this one? Um, oh, I'm going off in all sorts of different directions, I must admit. I, I do think, yeah, focusing on getting the passion coming across, because um, you, you caught my attention very much when you said I'm an activist, and then you moved on from that straight away. Um, and it, it would be really nice to see a link to the kind of things that you're, you know, you're particularly passionate about. And just that, not ne I know you didn't have very long to speak, to be fair, on a you know, some pitches you might have a bit longer, but, you know, how did that journey actually work for you in terms of, you know, why is this something that sort of meets some of your passion? Um, I, I do. It's probably worth us having a side conversation as well, because I do have uh, someone in mind who I think would really like your business, who I can put you in touch with. Okay. Um, and there's also an, an organisation that could support you as well, who are very, very geared towards... Um, I think we can call your business female led, can't we? There were, um, sorry guys, there were a number of males on your slide presentation, but I think we can still call it female led. Uh, but it's it's an organization that works with female led businesses that are looking at um, very much addressing issues of sustainability and so on. So you would fit very much in that well, niche as well. So um, yeah, if you, uh, I think Stu did some round connections, but if you and I connect afterwards and then we can we can follow up properly. Uh, Sorat, can I ask uh, like a very short question about these things? Because before that, I would have started my by saying, OK, I'm an Iranian human rights activist and I start my first business because another version of a vegan in exile in Portugal, because I'm literally in exile. Uh, then I was pitching to a lot of people and they were like, OK, maybe it is important to talking about that part, but maybe it is too much. And also, I mean, I'm against <laughs> the Iranian regime, of course, because I am yeah. out now with the, all the stuff happening in Israel, it can just provide some sort of a, like a tension and <laughs> Iranian, some sort of that we are doomed to just getting uh, answer to Iranian government. So I'm not sure how much should I mention, how much should I talk about it? I, I you, You're absolutely right. There needs to be a balance. I think where I was coming from more... I'm an activist. When I feel passionately about something, I, I go and do something about it. You know, one of the things I feel strongly about is, you know, the carbon footprint of what people eat, for example. 
you know, this business is going to. So I'm thinking more of that kind of time rather than lots of detail about the activism itself. Sure. So does that make sense? Very. I'm sure some people want more of the detail, but as you say, things, you know, people have personal views on things. So you have to be be careful, particularly in a group group pitch situation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Cheers. And I, and I offer this because I think it's helpful for everybody, right? So you're never going to make every investor happy, partly because they're ego-driven animals and they've got their own opinions and not all their opinions will be the same, right? And to a certain extent, again, going back to some of the stuff we teach, you need to reverse fit this to what kind of investor do you want? So you could say, hey, I just want an investor with money. Well, there's loads of those, right? What you really want, if you're getting a genuine investor, is somebody who's going to co-create with you and who's going to really build this in a similar way. So there's aspects of who you are that you want to really emphasize because that aligns well with who that investor is. Maybe you want an, an activist investor. Maybe you want a vegan investor. Maybe you want an investor who's also in exile from Iran. Whatever those aspects are, emphasize them because that will then lure them in and latch them in a way of they get the best empathy but if in the absence of really knowing clearly where you want to go to just be very definitely who you are because the more you fake it or obfuscate it the more you get an investor who doesn't really know you at all and then the relationship starts after the money's in the bank which is kind of weird right but yeah pick pick the profile of who you want and then work back to how you present and just do it for them do it perfect fit for them everybody else might be left or right may like it or hate it doesn't matter you just need the perfect investment match that's my view anyway